Is there any character that can seriously challenge Rurano Azaro's loyalty towards his captain, Monkey D. Luffy? The first mate of the Straw Hat Pirates that stood side by side with the future king of the pirates against the strongest creature in the world. That was willing to sacrifice his life and dreams at multiple occasions, swearing his allegiance and resolve to become the strongest swordsman in the world to Luffy while while almost bleeding to death. A man so powerful that he was able to cut Kaido, a feat that only Kozuki Oden, the strongest of the samurai of Wano was capable of doing, and a user of Conqueror's Hug, usually a sign that a person is meant to lead and rule and not follow another man. By the way, not the only thing that he has in common with the Dark King, Silvas Rayleigh, another absolute legend of the story, who was the right hand man of Gold Roger, the first pirate king. So how is it that Zoro is willing to sacrifice so, so much for Luffy, to the point where his loyalty to his captain is an even more respected and inspiring part of his character than his skills as a swordsman, his discipline, or his determination? I strongly believe that Zoro is as respectable and awesome as he is for his loyalty due to his change and growth throughout the story. If he had simply been loyal and trusting to Luffy right from the start, it just wouldn't have had the very same impact. Because when Luffy first meets and frees Zoro and basically bribes him into joining his crew, Zoro is very much a lone wolf type of character that hunts pirates on his own, following his very own path. Really, you can very easily see why Zoro has the will of a king and could have become an immensely powerful leader on his own if he never had met. Luffy. At the beginning of their journey, I think it's fair to say that Zoro sees joining Luffy as a useful step towards reaching his goal of finding and defeating Mihawk and becoming the strongest swordsman in the entire world. These here are the five major moments in the story that turn Zoro into one of the maybe the most loyal and respectable characters in all of anime and made him my personal favorite character in all of One Piece, in case that wasn't obvious. Being completely humiliated and almost killed by Mihawk at the Baratier, his objection to Usopp returning to the crew on Water 7, his sacrifice on Thriller Bark, swallowing his pride and begging to train under Mihawk during the time skip, and of course, pushing himself to the brink of death during the raid on Onigashima. So, getting to face off against Mihawk so early on into their journey, before even reaching the Grand Line, was the best thing that could have possibly happened to Zoro, really. This humbling defeat against Mihawk changed his perspective on the world fundamentally. Well, I think we all know that he was far from being the strongest here, at the same time he proved to us his potential to be it, and more importantly, I think, his determination for the very first time here. He would rather die for his value of being an honorable swordsman than run away. And not only did he get recognized by Mihawk for this, but more importantly, Luffy showed that he was more worried about his health than his skills as a swordsman, and he also showed unwavering faith in Zoro's ambition and dream to make it a reality. And so, having seen Luffy risk his own life a number of times already at this point for his friends, it changed Zoro's view and made him respect Luffy for both his strength and his willingness to die for the right cause and values. Remember, these are the two things that are the most important to Zoro. And so this feeling of respect just keeps on building up with Luffy saving Nami on Arlong Park, reaching the Grand Line, freeing Drum Island, and finally Alabasta from the rule of one of the seven warlords. At this point, Luffy has fully earned Zoro's respect, proving himself as powerful enough to be his leader. Now, Zoro is probably much more aware of the hierarchy and his position in the crew at this point than any of the other Straw Hats, because by accepting Luffy as his captain, Luffy also now carries Zoro's 
personal pride and honor as a swordsman. And so when Usopp disrespects Luffy and then wants to rejoin the crew without an apology a bit later, Zoro sees this insult to Luffy as an insult to him personally. After all, discipline and respect towards those who are stronger than you are two of the main things that he took away from his Wano training in Shimotsuke village, which we have seen a lot during the Wano arc as well. And so I would say that Zoro is both right and wrong here at the same time. He rightfully teaches Luffy a valuable lesson about being a good leader and warns him that being a pirate isn't a game. A lesson that Luffy later has to learn the hard way by losing his crew and failing to save his brother Ace. Really should have listened here. At the same time, however, Zoro also hasn't fully understood yet what makes the Straw Hat crew so special. The fact that everyone feels more or less equal and is free to express who they are and what they believe freely. And so only a little later, during the invasion of Water 7, when he fights together side by side with Usopp and sees his determination and willingness to fight and overcome his cowardice, does Zoro finally understand how Usopp has felt and why he wanted to leave the crew in the first place. All while Luffy is proving for the very first time that he will literally do anything, wage war on the government if need be, to get a member of his Straw Hat family back. Even though Robin, in theory, also had left the crew, just as Luffy would later do with Sanji as well in Whole Kick Island. So Zoro has now become a very important anchor for Luffy, teaching him to take things seriously and become a better leader overall, while at the same time also learning to appreciate the love and care the crew has for each other. And that is actually something I personally personally feel like a lot of people tend to overlook here and just another reason I think that makes Zoro so so awesome. Literally taking on all of Luffy's pain without so much as a second of hesitation on Thriller Bark then is probably still my favorite moment in the entire story up to this point. It's just so much raw emotion. Like legit, whenever you feel like you need a good cry, just watch this scene. In case you forgot, Zoro is already pretty much unable to stand up himself when he blocks Kuma's path to an unconscious Luffy. He bargains for him to let Luffy go in exchange for his own life. Kuma then, kindly enough, I guess, takes him up on that offer and using his unique devil fruit powers, extracts all of the damage and pain that Luffy has accumulated during his fight and gives Zoro just a small taste of it, which already brings him to his knees. He then lets him know that taking in the rest of this pain will kill him. Quick side note, since Kuma was actually not an enemy as we now know, I suppose he probably made sure that Zoro would not actually die, but he didn't exactly hold back either as we can see. And Zoro does not know this of course. And yet, without so much as a moment of hesitation, he just steps right into that bubble. Which then of course leads to the most epic moment of all time where Sanji finds him standing there, bleeding, telling him that nothing happens. Now this is of course the ultimate sacrifice he's willing to make here for Luffy. He puts the dream of his captain and the way he's able to change the world above his own dream. Zoro has completely left behind the idea that Luffy is merely a stepping stone for himself. Luffy's dream is now also his dream or part of his dream. But it does get even crazier from here because remember how Zoro knocked out Sanji, who was by the way, to be fair, also willing to sacrifice himself as well. Well, Zoro not only is prepared to give his life for Luffy clearly when necessary, but for every single member of the crew, including of course Sanji, despite all their brawls. And it really shows to me that Zoro at this point has fully internalized that the Straw Hats are not only a crew of pirates, but a family. And so as Luffy's right hand man and kind of the vice head of this family, it's his responsibility to step in and give his everything to protect the crew as a whole. This crew has now become the most valuable thing in his entire life. 
And so all of this goes to the next level when Zoro is sent to Mihawk's island after Sabaody. Because after seeing that Luffy lost Ace during the war, he throws away his honor and begs Mihawk to train him. At first, Mihawk's reaction to this is being absolutely disgusted. He thinks that Zoro is simply too weak to leave the island on his own and that he has lost all his pride as a swordsman. It's only when he finds out that Zoro already defeated all the mandrel monkeys and decided to stay behind anyways that he does see the truth of the matter. Zoro has made Luffy's dream part of his own and he wants to make Luffy the king of the pirates above all else. He wants to become the strongest swordsman in order to help his captain get get there and protect his crew from ever having to suffer through something like on Sabaody ever again. And so in this moment, he's willing to throw away his personal honor as a swordsman, what used to be his biggest value in life, because his honor as a vice captain of the Straw Hat crew is now much more important to him. I've actually made an entire video about Mihawk in this situation, explaining his crazy character development during and after the war. So if you want the whole story, check that out. But in short for here, Mihawk has learned Luffy's crazy power and potential during Marineford, a man who got the respect of both Shanks and Whitebeard, and thus in the end decides to train Zoro and acknowledges him as a worthy swordsman and apprentice of his. In other words, Mihawk really sees how much Zoro has grown as a person and grows himself. And so, not only does this turn Zoro into one of the strongest people in One Piece after the time skip, but it also earns him a a crazy bounty of 320,000 berries, which I'm honestly really jealous of. I have 580,000 subs right now, which if it were dollars and converted to berries would be 58 million berry bounty for me. By comparison, even Treble, a man that consists to 99% of slime, has a bounty of 99 million. <laughs> so please, if you want to help me overtake Treble by subscribing to the channel and raising my bounty, that would mean a lot to me. Which brings us all the way to Wano and an arc that coincidentally mirrors a lot of the events we've seen during Thriller Bark. And so it might or might not be surprising for you to find out that Zoro once again has pushed himself across his limits for Luffy and the crew. First, he's come face to face with Kaido himself, side by side with his captain, something we honestly all wanted to see really badly, and then dealt some real damage to the Yonko, earning his respect and revealing his conqueror's hockey to us, still one of the most hype moments of the entire raid so far. And after taking some heavy damage in the process, once again, he did not hesitate for even a second to take the wonder drug of the Minx that would come with devastating consequences for his health just so he could keep fighting. Without ever betting an eye though, Zoro just takes it and goes off to take down King, Kaido's number two in command and one of the most powerful fighters and antagonists in the entire story so far. That's someone on the same level roughly as Katakuri, who Luffy had really struggled to defeat in the arc before. And now, once again, Zoro has been pushed to the brink of death, where he actually saw death himself with his cloak and his scythe, though who knows what that might actually be all about in the end, we'll find out. However, right now, if you want to dive even deeper into Zoro's fantastic character arc and the fantastic secret how he convinced his biggest rival, Mihawk, to become his mentor, you really can't ignore this video right here. 